Well, hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to my shop. So, today's video is going to be a real easy turn-in job. I wasn't even going to film this, but I figured, well, hey, you know, there's always new, uh, you know, viewers and new people coming to the uh, machining community and they want to learn. I mean, I'm continuing to learn and I figure, you know, everybody that's viewing is continuing to learn no matter how many years of experience you have. So, uh, you know, you got to start out somewhere, right? <clears throat> so, we got a paid job. It's real easy. It's a uh, pin for a bush hog. Another bush hog repair. Go figure. Uh, customer provided some uh, mystery steel, so we'll see what that is. I'm assuming it's just mild steel. Uh, we'll just go over to the lathe, get it knocked out. But what I'll do is um, I'll explain a little more of what I'm doing and why I'm doing um, for the people that are trying to learn. So uh, you senior guys, you know, you may not find this interesting. So that's my disclaimer up ahead. Let's get over to workbench and uh, show you what we got to do. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. It's a beautiful fall day, so I got the doors open. So I got some natural light in here. Hopefully it's not washing it out. This is a uh, drawing that the customer provided, which is actually pretty good compared to some of the other chicken scratch I've received before. But uh, the pin, OD, one and three eighths. It's gonna be three and five eighths inches long, and we need a internal bore of five eighths. All these uh, measurements are extremely loose. We don't have to even bore or ream that. We just drill this a five eighths hole. We said that is fine and something really close to one and three eighths he's happy with that it's just sliding no problem i brought this piece of uh mystery metal here looks like maybe it was some sort of pin it's got a piece of threaded bolt on the end of it i don't know if you guys can see that but i took a file to it it scratches really easy so it's not very hard now unfortunately <laughs> some reason you know monarch did everything perfect and then they built just you know the most awesome lays but the through holes in the headstock are so small they just for some reason did very small through holes so we're going to use the monarch today but unfortunately you know i can't just chuck this thing up i'm going to have to go ahead and cut a piece before we start so let me take this over to the bandsaw and you guys will meet me over at the lathe Back from the bandsaw. Now, there's something referred to as a three to one rule. And basically, you don't want your stock sticking out more than three times the length of the diameter. If you do longer than that, then you're supposed to support it keep from that flex you know because that tool is going to try to push this piece of stock you know away from it as it cuts and then you know you can get you a taper so we're i got her extended just about four and a quarter this thing is about one and three quarters i think it's like one seven seven eight But remember, we're going to turn her down, so once we get her down to one and three eighths, we're kind of pushing that general rule. So I'm going to go ahead and put the center in, make life easier. I've already got a hole. I'm just going to go ahead and touch it up. So I've got a little bit of lead-in angle. It'll make the uh, you know live center happy. So let me get the rotary phase converter fired up. And we'll get that knocked out. Now just a safety tip, when you start your lathe up, just to make sure that stock is nice and tight and it's not going to come flying out, you know, never stand you know, right here. Always stand back behind the headstock or, or way far the tailstock, depending on if you got controls down there. And kind of see how she looks, how she's going to react when you turn her on. Of course this is a clutch lathe, if you don't have a clutch then go from zero to whatever RPMs you got set really really fast and the last thing you want is that piece of stock come flying out and you get injured so let's go ahead and 
touch up that hole. That's all we need. Got my dial already set on my X axis. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this face up while we're here. that center in and we'll get to peeling some chips. Extended center is in. Uh, just dialed in about 25 pounds just to get under this rust. See how she goes and then um, that'll give us a starting point. RPM's uh, 300. Take her down to one inch, 375 thou. <laughs> and that cleanup pass took us to uh, 1749. All right, let me get the coolant set up and we'll start peeling some chips. Really ready. Hopefully, you guys are in a good spot. We'll get covered in coolant. Dial in uh, 50 thou for a total of 100. And we'll make some chips. how we did so we were at uh, 1750 we should be at 1650 Let's see what these cutting pressures are like all right so she took off a little more I don't know if you can see it we're at 1636 so she took off a little more than uh, 100 thou let's see if I can get that in there well uh, and lock it for you. There you go. So, all right, we'll adjust the next cut. Since you took an extra 14 thou, back it off. And see how it goes. I'm gonna dial in 43. check it so there you go so just shy of what we're shooting for you can see it 1539 so we dialed in 86 thou and we still took uh, a smidgen over a hundred thou just by that and by a thou and a half so all right so now we kind of get dialed in on our tool pressure See if we can get that last cut just right when we get to it. Now then 42 thou. See if we can get another 100 thou just to cut total. I'm 
be the last pass. I just set it and took a measurement. This stuff is going to be a couple of foul under. Checking it here. We're going to try and keep track of our tool pressures, but she cut it a little bit smaller than I'd like. I mean, like I said, it's no big deal for this job. If you did plus or minus five thou, we're pretty much in there. Because, see, that is three, oh, it's 70 and a half. So, cut about four and a half thou small. Or Three seventy there. So, yep. Okay. Well, you know, I said a tad bit smaller than I'd like, but it's within what he expected, what he wanted. So, yeah, we we're just trying to rip her down and get her done. But uh, let's go on to the uh, second part. What we need to do is uh, break that edge. We'll go ahead and uh, drill our bore, and then. Basically just, uh, you know, part her off and this part's done. Put chamfer. Time to drill the bore. Got a half inch drill bit in this now. We'll run that down. About four inches, so I guess plenty of room to part off. So I'm just going to mark it here. Our depth. See if we can do this at the uh, get you back here moved over hang on guys a little bit Hopefully that's pretty good I got you on the tool post set up with the uh, 5 8 bit. Fortunately I don't have a Morris taper for that small so I'm going to use a conventional drill bit. And as you can see she's hot so we'll let her cool down a little bit too. Alright, if 5 8 is in, we got to take her all the way to here. So. Man, this Ready. 
over there. Sweet. Let me get all this mess cleaned up and we'll part her off. I think I got you in a good spot. Alrighty, we're all set up to uh, part this baby off. Slow the lay down a little bit. Got the part turned around. Need to take 33 thou off of this face here. That'll give us the dimension we need of uh, 3 inches, 0.625. And then we'll uh, break that edge and we'll break that inner bore edge after we get that done. Sped the lathe back up. zero which is right there we'll come in and get that off guys all finished up just a uh, simple pin for a bush hog simple turning job and as I mentioned earlier in the video this is kind of geared more towards beginners so that's why I kind of talked more about uh, you know tool pressure and setting things up and the reasons why I did what I did so um, you know, I hope you found it informative and I appreciate you hanging out with me I appreciate you guys always watching my videos and commenting you know, I know there'll probably be some haters and give me some thumbs down because this is just a basic video, but you know, hey, it is what it is. But uh, we'll catch you on the next project and catch you on the next video. All right, see ya.